believe this. I ordered this thing three days ago and here it is already. What's going guys? Super excited for today's video. You might have seen recently for Christmas, I bought my son this four-wheeler right here off of Amazon. And honestly, when I ordered it out, I was pretty skeptical, not going to lie. But it has ended up being absolutely awesome. He loves it, rides it every single day. So I decided to go ahead and treat myself. And what better way to do that than by trying another Amazon special? So here in front of me, we have the cheapest brand new 2024 250 cc six-speed dirt bike on the market this thing costs less than half of what a japanese counterpart would so uh, i'm super freaking excited for it i hope it turns out to be awesome just like that thing but there's only one way to find out so let's go ahead unbox it put it together take it for a ride see what it's all about it had a fairly good trip it looks like it's not too torn up or anything about like the four there was dude i hadn't had anything to ride in in a while my last dirt bike was a ktm 250 xcw so world of a difference from this most likely but should still be awesome so to get back on it see if i remember how to ride one a couple more straps get this box off and then we got to take the crate apart once again feels like freaking christmas as a kid right now boy the big reveal dun, dun, dun. I went with black and blue. Almost went red to match Knox, but I decided let's go ahead and change it up. Go with a different color. I think it's going to look sick. There's our front tire. Black wheels. Got a whole bunch of 14 mils to take the crate apart. <laughs> Dude! How sick does that look? I'm so excited. Some more plastics. Got a couple more straps on the swing arm. Got our kickstand right here. Last thing keeping her on is this main bolt up here. Everything that you take off, you will be putting back on. So there's not like bags of hardware. It's all on the bike. Mine is, so carefully. Check this out, sit her down, and now we can sit it up on whatever kind of stand I have. This dirt bike weighs a couple hundred pounds, so this is definitely a two-man job to get it onto a stand, preferably. I don't have a stand anymore, so I'm going to use this chair up here, which hopefully doesn't roll away. Uh, but I put the, the crossbar back in here. Let's just try to freaking manhandle it on here. Yes, don't collapse the chair. Booyah! Let's go ahead and get our front fender off of the back tire. Let's go ahead and attach our brake light assembly. It's going to be a 532nd Allen key up top, 10 mil nuts on the bottom. And we are going to be using blue Loctite on literally every nut and bolt because we don't want anything rattling loose. Go ahead and attach our turn signals. It's gonna be a 15 mil nut on the back side. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our rear shock. Push this out the way, go ahead and line up our shock first. And you're gonna want to put this end and this so it actually can sit on that lip and uh, tighten up just like that. Already put some Loctite on it. We got a lock washer, a lock nut. This one is actually the 1116, the other one's the 15 mil. Go ahead and swing this back up. We're gonna press down on the suspension. Get this to line up. Throw our bolt in from the other side. A little Loctite. And that's gonna be a 13 mil on the backside, 15 mil on the nut. Let's 
Then all our zip ties off. Carefully put our brake line in these little holders. Let's go ahead and throw our kickstand on. It's gonna be a 17 mil and a 5 8 and this bolt actually threads into the backside of the kickstand, and then we're gonna put the nut on the back of that. See if we can finesse this uh, kickstand spring on there without flipping the bike over, hopefully. All right, we're right there. Oh, right back down there. There we go. Now, as long as she'll stay on. Hopefully not shrapnel fly through the air kill me oh yeah so there she is so we disassembled it and took the front bolt out of the forks it had these little spacers these actually go in the wheel there's a little groove in there so i cleaned mine up because it had a bunch of dirt on it threw a little extra grease on and just pop it into place just like that clean it up they go on both sides and now we can uh, throw this baby on. There's a little stopper in between your front brake pads. You want to pull that out. Gently slide our front tire in. Try to get our brake rotor lined up in between the pads without too much problems, hopefully. There she goes. Alright, <clears throat> let's throw our bolt through. There we go. Most everything is plugged up except for a few things that I see. I just gotta figure out. Okay, that's our throttle. So does it rotate like this? Rotate all the way back around. That seems right. We're going to put our clamps on here, get our bolts threaded. Obviously, once we ride, we can go back and adjust this if we need to. Raise it farther forward or down. But, if we can get a little bit more forward. First. Now we got our front brakes hooked up, we're going to give this bad boy a nice little spin. Lock the brakes up, just do it a couple times, try to get this thing set into place. Everything down here is loose. Now we're gonna go ahead with a 12 mil, tighten down this passenger side. Use our 13, 16, I do believe, yes. Go ahead and tighten this nut down. All right, now that we got that nice and snug, let's back this side back out. Loosened up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and tighten this side. And then tighten this side down, and we're done. And make sure your speed sensor does not hit your rotor. If it does, back it out some. Let's go ahead and cut all this stuff free. See what we got left. This is gonna be our key entry cluster and front turn signal. And then right here should be our headlight. It is. We're gonna go ahead and throw our front fender on. Got these little washers, slap them down in the top, and it's gonna be four eight mil bolts. Snake our cluster up in here. There was a eight mil screw that I removed from in here. That nice and level. Tighten her down. There we go. Um, that's all plugged up. Let's see what of our what are our wires looking like. If we can go ahead. Let's see. These guys are gonna go together. Triangle connector. And then that just leaves two one of which 
is for our headlight, but what is the other? So before I put the cluster on there, this little bracket right here was already on with a eight mil screw. Uh, you wanna leave this on because this is actually what holds this little fuse, which is what that weird plug plugs into. So we need to go ahead and take our seat off so we can hook our battery up. That way we can make sure which side the turn signal is correct up front. I believe it's just gonna be these two rear eight mil bolts. Right, we should be able to should be able to just lift our seat off now. There she is. So yes, the battery is not connected. But we're gonna go ahead and quickly do that now. Jump down two. Looks like it does. We officially have juice. Our key is turned. Let's turn that back off. That was crispy clean LED. I'm excited to show you all that. That looked really good. All right, you want to take your strap, hook it right there, and attach it to the back. Let's go ahead and cut our display on. Ooh, that looks freaking good. All right, left turn signal. We're good. Right turn signal. We are good. Go ahead and do your turn signals one at a time. We've got to disconnect them. So just push the little clear sleeve back. Take you some needle nose. Grab onto the metal. This. And pop it free. It's gonna be two connections. They connect together for your hazards. Now you got it free, run it through. Well, take the uh, nut off first. Then run your wire through. Run your wire through. Put your nut back on. And tighten down and connect them back to the matching color. So right here we have light blue. You want to connect back to light blue. You'll feel it pop into place. Just use your needle nose. We want to take this big black grommet and try to shove all the wires and connectors into it and then zip tie it down so that everything will hopefully stay nice and waterproof. Hopefully that will help keep water out. So everything stay nice and happy. Let's bend our horn bracket way back out of the way of our headlight. Let's clip this zip tie real quick. Get this guy finagled on there. Might be a little fun. All right, it's time to go ahead and throw our plastics on. You do need to remove your seat and then unbolt the rear rack. There's a bolt here, a bolt here, and then two underneath, one on top. Now we can throw our front fender on. It's a eight mil to take this radiator shroud bolt out. Now we can go ahead and start lining this up. I ain't gonna lie. This is probably one of the biggest downsides I've seen so far. Uh, Fitment is not spectacular on the plastics. As you can see, fitment is not great. You're just gonna have to bend it into place, bolt it down. Now on the rear, we need to go ahead and remove this eight mil bolt. You wanna have it underneath the rack. It's gonna go behind this piece of plastic. You're just gonna have to basically, like the front, just finagle it until it Lines up. Try to line that up. Throw our bolt back in. Get that started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these two down, get our top fender bolt on, the two underneath, and then throw our seat back on. I tell you what, this thing is actually starting to look like a proper dirt bike. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the clear plastic off of everything, and let's see how much better it looks. I ain't gonna lie, she's looking pretty crispy now. I went ahead and tightened our handlebars down, threw our pad on, 
I'm not putting the mirrors on yet, and I'm not putting the rear steps on either. I just don't have the need for that yet. Uh, and I don't want to tear up our mirrors before we're actually road legal. So now we want to go ahead and change our oil because yes, it does come with oil, but just to save money, I'm sure it's absolute garbage. And it does say in the instructions to change your oil to a high quality 10W40 before starting it. Uh, unfortunately, they do not have a hole for your drain plug. So you have to take your skid plate off, which is two eight mils and two 10 mils. We can get access to, where's he at? Right there, our drain plug. Obviously this is our fill. And then on this, unlike the little four-wheeler, which does not have a oil filter, this one does. Oop, almost forgot about that. That would have been not great. That would have totally melted. Um, right here is our oil filter. It's gonna be 1116. Probably gonna be right at a quart, if I had to guess. That sucker was on there. Yeah, it looks like oil. Wonder if it stinks like the other. So you don't technically have to do this. I mean, it's recommended obviously by the people that make the bike, but um, we rode the full wheeler, the X Pro 125 Storm for two full tanks of gas on the initial oil and then swapped over to some premium oil. Uh, but on this thing, we're gonna go ahead and just swap it out. There we go. So that is one million percent slap full. So when you take the oil filter cap off, it's got this spring behind it. And then you just got that mesh or metal filter. Not sure if it comes out or not. Not gonna fiddle with it because it's obviously brand new. Even though it is funny, on the spring there was a freaking hair, like an inch long, look like a dog hair. Uh, that's weird. Uh, but yeah, we are about drained completely out. Gonna be probably a little bit over a quart, maybe one total quart. I'm gonna add it up. I poured all the oil that came out in this bottle. It's exactly 32 ounces right here at this line. So we're gonna be doing one full quart of our Mobile One Racing 4T 10W40. And it is right on the money. So now we gotta throw some gas in it. Time for our first startup. Oh my god. <laughs> What you think? Whoa. Big dirt bike is finally together. Careful where you're stepping. Oh my goodness, this is bigger than me. It's big, huh? I'll just go out for, you know, you and me time. Yeah, we're going to go ride here soon. Oh, right now? Got some fresh 93. Let's go ahead and fill her up. Oh, jeez. Not sure why, but this thing is puking gas out the bottom of the carburetor. The line that comes right out the bottom. Well, she's puking gas out like the float stuck on the carb. Uh, I've already given it some love taps, still leaking. So before we pull the carb out, let's go ahead and try just starting it and see if that'll free it up. So first startup ever. Let's see how she sounds. All right, guys, we're working with an all-new setup, so hopefully the video and audio is good. I went for a very brief ride, and then Knox and Lauren wanted to join, so we got the whole crew out here. Did have an issue with the starter sticking. Uh, it's 24 degrees this morning. Uh, we just put some gas in everything. Our carburetor seems to have ungunked. It does not appear to be leaking anymore, which is awesome. Um, I did reach out to them and tell them that my brake light and the carb was leaking. Expro did email me back the next day and said that they would send that message over to the parts department and send out whatever needed to be. Uh, I don't know if it's the cold or what. I put some alcohol on here to try to get it to free up. It seems like it's sticky. I was thinking the alcohol would pop it free, but uh, it's still sticking. Alright, we're just going to we're gonna let her warm up on the on the move so let's get a little feel for her. all 
automatically I know the shifter feels weird to me but then again I haven't ridden a dirt bike in I don't even know how long my last one being like I said the KTM 250 XCW which is a 250 uh, two-stroke <laughs> six-speed dirt bike which I feel is the pinnacle of a trails dirt bike I love single track on it it was super lightweight nimble uh, electric start with kickstart which this does not have a backup kickstart which does kind of stink um, but we're gonna let her warm up some and then we're gonna give her the beans and see what she's made of got Knox on his X Pro Storm this is the um, Templar X so they do have a cheaper version that comes in a couple hundred dollars less He's asking if he can go across right there. <laughs> um, it is a couple hundred dollars less than this, but it's a five speed and it doesn't have all the options. This is a dual sport, like I said, so you can take this on the road and everything. Um, and then the six speed. Um, but I paid $2,170 shipped to the door, taxes, title, everything, which depending on where you buy it can be more expensive, less expensive, whatever the case. Um, but that was the cheapest I found. And I think that's insane for the price. So I did go to my local four-wheeler store and shop around a little bit. And the cheapest thing that I found there was a 2003 uh, Suzuki 110, which uh, is obviously like a little kid's dirt bike. <laughs> and it was more expensive than this. 20 years old kid dirt bike? What? The closest thing price-wise that was new was a uh, electric dirt bike that was for probably like a, a three, four year old. It was absolutely tiny. I'll throw up pictures as you're seeing. Closest thing like bike wise they had there was uh, probably the Honda 230. And I think it was 6,500 bucks before, before um, taxes and all the other fees that dealerships have. Now, obviously you could go with something a lot more powerful like a you know high compression, KX 250, Honda 250, Yamaha 250, the, the you know, motorcycles, or the uh, um, track orientated ones, which I've had a 2015 KX 250, and it was, it was a ripper. It, it was a fun bike, but similar to this, it was heavy, and so that's when I got my KTM, and uh, I never looked back after that. It was perfect. Now, I do want to try some trails, single track with this. Um, but this is definitely on the heavier side, so it's definitely going to be a little fun. Um, no backup kickstart, like I said, so if you're under battery issues, you're going to have to hopefully roll start it. All right, let's get over here in this a little bit more technical root stuff. It spins the tires free. That's the hardest I've gotten on it. I mean, it's zippy. It, it feels good. I know a lot of people upgrade the carb on this thing. Apparently, um, it comes pretty lean from them, which you can, you know, it's spitting and sputtering on the D cells. Um, so they do make an upgraded carburetor, get a little more power out of it. But let's get up here, and we're gonna we're gonna give her the beans and see what she'll do. All right, so let's run through all the gears. It was only fifth. It's definitely probably gonna run, I would say, easy 65 or whatever. I'll have a link to everything that I'm using in the description from my GoPro, the GoPro Media, uh, my microphone, my helmet, my gloves. I'll have all that. The dirt bike. See if we can go over here and not run into the fence. This thing feels pretty good, I ain't gonna lie. Let's see if we wreck right here. Almost. <laughs> Tires seem decent enough. Um, it's not too fat. It's not too heavy. It feels pretty good. Um, clutch feels good. Gearing, a uh, little, little close together, I guess. Uh, our throttle stuck a little bit there. <laughs> Y'all saw that, right? It just went red line. I didn't love the whole throttle sticking right there. Now it was when I was off the gas, which is good because the last thing you want is to be on the gas and it stick. 
but that definitely makes me a little bit nervous not gonna lie <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll maybe have to tinker with the throttle cable or something it sounds good But it does run out good <laughs> for a Chinese bike, which this is essentially a Honda knockoff. Um, it feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, granted the um, starting button wasn't sticking and it didn't try to um, absolutely nuke itself by going max throttle right there I would give this thing an extremely good review but since it did those two things I'm gonna have to probably knock it down <laughs> just a smidge so there it goes again yeah that's a great way to end the in the uh <laughs> review it going freaking red line again it didn't go red line when like 5,000 rpms which is too high but something's going on i'm thinking it's all carburetor related oh it looks like our gas is actually leaking again it look it seemed like it had stopped i'm thinking we just got a turd of a freaking carb on this thing and so they're i'm sure hopefully gonna send it a whole new carb um if they don't for whatever reason i was already planning on upgrading to the the, the one, the aftermarket one that's supposed to be so much better. Yeah, she's, she's puking gas again. So uh, that's probably going to be a, a fix for that. And I would assume that's probably going to make the, the throttle sticking happier. <laughs> We're going to have to see. Um, so yes, it's freaking awesome. But it's not a Yamaha. It's not a Honda. It's not a Suzuki or Kawasaki or KTM. This is a Chinese bike. But... For what you pay for it, you get a lot of freaking bike. You just might have to iron out a few kinks, which we're going to have to. Starting with this stupid thing sticking. Figure out the carburetor, the throttle, and uh, go from there. Second X-Pro uh, added to the fleet. Why is it? It's just freaking peeing. Gasoline. Alright boys, I've been doing a little tinkering on the Templar and we've got our main issue resolved. So we no longer have a sticky start button and the fix for it was to loosen the screw a little bit. I had it on there too tight and that was, I guess, squeezing this plastic and not letting it pop back out freely. So loosen this screw up a little bit and now pops out totally fine. She's cranking up great. Um, as of the moment, on the switch going down, I think it was down, let's look, yeah. I guess it's technically up. Um, I, I'm guessing this is for each side of the tank, depending on which one you turn it to, not a reserve versus an on, because uh, this this runs to the other side of the tank. This one obviously runs right there. Uh, but at least in this position, it's not leaking. It seems to be fixed. We officially have six kilometers, or KM, that's kilometers, right? I think so, whatever. So, uh, yeah, like I said, out in the 20 degree weather, she was a little, little grumpy for, for idling, but, uh, I just rode it out to the barn in the back and idling totally good now. So that definitely brings the overall score of this thing up considerably. And, uh, I think, I think, man, it's a, it's a good value. So honestly, for the amount of money that this thing costs, it's a amazing entry bike. This is definitely not going to be something I would take out on the motocross track or go try to do some single cross racing with, but single cross, single track racing with. Um, but for a beginner dirt bike that could also supposedly be registered and taken on the street, uh, you can't beat it for the money. Like I said many times in this, it's not a Japanese bike, but... It's a pretty freaking good knockoff, not going to lie. So uh, I'm digging it. I think it looks really good. The color scheme definitely reminds me of my YFZ450X. And this being an X version is the reason why I went with the blue. Now in the pictures, it does have everything looking like a much, much lighter blue. But it is this darker, similar, a little bit darker, or more, more blue than the handlebars. Um, but it's not the light baby blue that it looks like in the pictures. It's going to come in like this. 
so expect that but um yeah everything except for our brake light is now working we have headlights um that's your high beams so high low our horn turn signals um kill switch electric start choke which definitely needs to be adjusted but uh hadn't done that yet all of our shifter foot pegs are all springed sprung so if you hit a stump or something it's not going to snap them off disc brakes front and rear uh speedometer which we're going to hopefully be able to change two miles per hour ah just like that you just hold the button so we've been three miles and voila just like that <laughs> it took me two seconds to actually try it and we fixed it um t -t 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 -t. i think it would look a lot better without the rack on there but i think that adds support for all of this crap so i don't know maybe we'll take that off probably make it look better like i said um 18 inch rear 21 front it's a good combo adjustable shocks front and rear yes front and rear um i would say at least out of the box how it comes if you're under five seven five six it's going to be tough for you to stand up on this thing i can't flat foot it um so you can lower the suspension if you need to um handlebars feel pretty good clutch feels good gas feels pretty good uh, as long as it doesn't like i say rev itself up again start puking gas out or anything else it's a freaking steal dude this thing is a freaking heck of a dirt bike for the amount of money so with that said definitely hit the like button if you did enjoy subscribe if you are new there's gonna be plenty more videos on this dirt bike modifications different riding conditions overall long-term reviews yada 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 the whole spiel i think it's gonna be a good time so anyways like i said leave a like drop a comment subscribe hit the bell all the good stuff i'll see you all in the next one